Welcome to day number four of Learn SolidWorks in 30 Days. My name is Wong, and today we will learn how to create a simple hair comb that you can also 3D print. By the end of this lesson, you will learn how to create a 2D sketch, the extrude feature, how to use the linear pattern feature, and how to add fillets to your part. All right, let's get started. Inside of SolidWorks, let's start a new part file by clicking on a button next to the home icon. For this part, we want the units to be in inches, so let's make sure that the units are set correctly before doing anything else. I recommend checking the units each time you create a new part so that mistakes can be prevented. To do this, you can go to Tools, Options, Document Properties, and Units. Here, we can set the units, position, and so on. The default setting should be set to IPS or inch, pound, second. So you may set your units to inches if you wish to follow along. There is another quick way to change your units by hovering your mouse to the bottom right corner of the screen. Over here, there is a drop down menu where you can quickly switch to a unit of your choice. We'll leave it as a default IPS for this tutorial. With that said, we are ready to begin creating our sketch. First, Choose the Sketch tab on the Command Manager. Choose the Sketch icon on the top left of the screen. With this selected, we can then see our three primary planes. The Property Manager is prompting us to select a plane on which to begin our sketch. As I move my cursor over to the plane, they are highlighted in orange. I'll highlight the front plane and left click on it to make a selection. By default, the software has moved my view normal to the front plane. This means that I'm looking directly into the front plane that I'm sketching on. Another way you can do this is by selecting the plane that you want to begin your sketch on and then clicking on the sketch button. Both methods work the same way. The red L in the middle represents the origin or the center of my design space. I'll use this for reference as I create my model. Now that we've created a sketch, let's take a look at the sketching tools that we have available. Most of the tools are pretty straightforward, but note that there is a tiny drop-down arrow next to some icons, letting you know that there are multiple ways to use a tool. For example, when we click on the arrow next to the rectangle tool, we are provided with five different options of how we can make a rectangle. To start, I'll click on a corner rectangle tool. With the corner rectangle tool selected, we will start a sketch by left-clicking on the origin and then left-clicking again to place the rectangle. Notice that when the rectangle is formed, it is shaded in a dark blue color. This is because our shaded sketch contours option is turned on. This helps us to know if our contour is closed, which is necessary when we move on to create our solid feature from it. If there are any gaps in the sketches, you might run into issues, so it's best to make sure that this option is turned on. Notice that there are black and blue lines in the sketch. This is because the sketch is underdefined, meaning not all of the geometry is fully described by relations or dimensions. We can also tell that the sketch is underdefined by looking at the bottom right of the window, which says underdefined. The color of the line is another visual cue that tells you which part of the sketch is underdefined. Black segments are fully defined, while blue lines are underdefined. These underdefined segments can still be dragged into different positions and still satisfy the dimensions and relations that apply to them. We will go ahead and fully define a sketch now by adding dimensions to the drawing. Click on a smart dimension icon located on the command manager. With this selected, left click on the black line to give it a dimension and then left click the second time to insert a dimension. The software will prompt you to put in a value we will give it a value of four inches. Next, we will do the same for the width of the rectangle by left-clicking on it and then left-clicking again to insert. We will give it a value of 0 0.5 inches. With the sketch fully defined, we are now ready to start extruding it. Head on over to the Command Manager and click on the Features tab. Click on the Extruded icon to launch the Extrude command. This will open the Properties Manager and orientate the view isometrically to preview what it may look like in its extruded state. The Property Manager allows you to configure both the direction and the dimension 
of how you want your part extruded. If you click, hold, and drag the gray arrow, you can extrude the part manually. On the property manager settings, go ahead and define how much you would like to extrude this rectangle. Enter a value of 0 0.200 inches and hit the green check mark when you're done. Now that you've extruded the rectangle, you're ready to start creating the teeth of the comb. We'll do this by creating 2D sketches on this extruded block and then extruding them. Start by orienting the view of the object by holding the middle mouse button and dragging the mouse to move the object around. If you need more practice, now is a good time to pause the video. Once the bottom of the rectangular block is in view, go ahead and click on the face. The face is highlighted in blue to indicate that you've selected it. With the bottom face selected, we will go to the Command Manager and click on the Sketch tab. We will click on the Sketch command again this time to create a sketch for one of the teeth. By default, SolidWorks will adjust the view normal to the face that you selected. We'll go ahead and select the Corner Rectangle tool again. Once selected, we will go ahead and create a sketch at the left corner of the part. As you hover your mouse over the corner of the block, Notice that an orange dot is highlighted as a visual indicator that the corner is present. We want to left click on this once and then move the cursor over to the bottom of the block. As you hover your cursor over to the bottom, an orange line appears again to signal to you that an edge is present. Go ahead and left click to place a sketch. This time, we'll give the length of the sketch a dimension of 0.15 inches. Notice that you don't need to define the width of the sketch again as you've constrained it to fit within the bounds of the block. Once you're done placing the sketch, zoom out of the object by scrolling the mouse wheel forward. Orient the view such that you can see the entirety of the object. We are now ready to create the first tooth. Head to the Command Manager again and click on the Features tab. We will use the Extrude feature for the tooth. In the Property Manager, enter a value of 0.8 inches. We will click on a draft icon and enter a value of 4 degrees. Adding a draft tapers the extruded object and gives you the sharp pointy edges that you see on the comb. When you're finished, hit the green check mark. We will now create a second tooth, this time a little thinner than the first one. Go to the command manager again and select the sketch tool. We'll select the same face again that we used for the first tooth. Select the corner rectangle tool again, and then make a sketch directly next to the first tooth. This time, we'll give it a length of 0 0.08 inches. Notice that the sketch is still underdefined, so we'll have to add another dimension to fully define it. To fully define a sketch, we can add a dimension between the first and second tooth. We will give it a value of 0 0.05 inches. With this sketch fully defined, we will go ahead and extrude the second tooth, just as we did for the first one. SolidWorks remembers the last dimension that you've entered, so we won't have to re-enter it again. Click on a draft icon again, but this time entering 2 degrees instead of 4. When you're finished, hit the green check mark. You could continue creating sketches and extruding it multiple times, but there's an easier way to do it, and I'll introduce you to the Linear Pattern tool in SolidWorks. In the Command Manager, select the Features tab. Click on the Linear Pattern tool. In the Property Manager, you can indicate which feature you'd like to repeat by clicking on the white box directly beneath Features and Faces. With the box highlighted in blue, this is a cue for you to select a feature that you'd like to repeat. There are two ways you can do this. The first way is to click on a feature directly in the design area. If you had selected the wrong feature the first time, you can go back by clicking on a feature in a blue box and by hitting the delete key. The second way you can select this feature is by clicking on a small drop down arrow next to the property manager. This brings up the feature tree. Click on a feature you want to repeat. With this feature selected, you are now ready to duplicate it. On the top of the property manager, you can select the direction which you would like this duplicated. Click on a box to select the direction. 
To select a direction, you can either select an edge or a plane. Place your cursor on the edge that is adjacent to the second tooth. Again, the edge will be highlighted in orange as a signal that you've identified it. Click on it to confirm your selection. The second box is where you will put in the dimensions of the spacing. We will enter a value of 0.11 inches. The third box is where you can decide how many instances of the feature you like to duplicate. You can put in any number you want, but for this tutorial, we will pick 33 as our number. When you're finished, hit the green check mark. The final tooth of the comb is similar to the first tooth that we've created. With the skills you've now learned, I want you to pause this video and see if you can insert a tooth on the right corner of the block. Great job with creating the last tooth. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. We're now almost finished with creating the comb. Next, we will show you how you can add a handle for the comb. Orient the comb on its side. Select the face that's on the furthest end of the block. Click on the sketch tab on the command manager and bring up the sketch tool again. With the corner rectangle tool selected, go ahead and sketch a box that is about halfway down. Using the smart dimension tool, we will give this dimension a value of 0.25 inches. When you're finished, go to the Features tab again and select the extruded boss feature. This time, we will select a dimension of 6 inches. We'll give it a draft of 0.5 degrees. When you're finished, hit the green check mark. Now that the comb is almost done, there's just one last step remaining. Notice how the object still looks really blockish and sharp around its edges? We want to fix it right now by adding some fillets to the part. Fillets allow you to round sharp corners so that they're more aesthetically pleasing. To access the fillets option, go to the command manager and select the features tab. Click on the fillet icon. You may have noticed that there are several different fillet variations, but today we're just going to be focusing on creating symmetrical fillets. The first fillet that we want to add is on the underside of the handle. Notice that in the Property Manager, SolidWorks is prompting you to select the item that you want to fill it. With the Fillet tool, you can select either internal or external edges. For the first fillet, let's go ahead and select the edge that is intersecting the handle and the block. Let's give it a fillet radius of 0.8 inches. When you're finished, hit the green check mark. We will do the same for the top left corner of the comb to give it a nice, rounded finish. This time, we will give this a fillet radius of 0.2 inches. When you're finished, hit the green check mark. With the skills you've now learned, I want you to pause this video and complete the fillets for the rest of the comb. Great job with adding fillers to the rest of the part. I hope the exercise was fun for you. Whew, that was a lot to unpack, but congratulations on finishing this tutorial. This concludes day four of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have learned something new today. Don't forget to tune in to the next episode and we will see you later.